Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching electromagnetics at Idaho State University. In this video, I'm going to be covering an example problem of magnetic boundary conditions when we have a tilted plane surface separating two different mediums. So we have a medium one and a medium two, and there's this tilted plane in between them. So it's at an angle. We are given the flux B1 in medium one, and we are asked to find B2, the flux in medium two. We also have some information about the permeability of these two um, different materials in medium one and medium two. So let's get started. So the first thing that we should do is we want to assume that medium one and medium two are not exotic, and we will keep this in uh, the back of our mind for now. But this is what we've done throughout this course, and this means that the flux and the intensity are going to be related to each other in this way. This will come in handy later. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at that tilted plane because the tilted plane is going to give us some problems when we're trying to find the normal. So we see the tilted plane. We can see that the red line is defined by y equals uh, y plus 2x is equal to 2, and that's given in the problem statement. Uh, if you want to look at this uh, in a more classic way, you can rearrange it and see that y is equal to minus 2x plus 2. And so that makes sense. And then we can also see that based on that, yes, uh, we have this, these two different points, which it's passing through. So it has a slope of minus 2, and the intercept is at plus 2. So that makes sense. All right. So now that we've been able to define that line, think about that a little bit. We know that like all of these boundary condition problems, we're going to need to understand the difference between the normal part and the tangent part. So when we're solving for B2, it will be most convenient for us to use a normal vector, so the normal unit vector, going away from medium 2. At the very end of this video, I'm going to show you what happens if you do it backwards, and you can still get the same answer. But let's, out of convenience, use a normal vector pointing away from medium 2. So doing that, we can decompose that normal vector into the x component and the y component, where the red line is the plane that separates these two, and that normal vector is, is perpendicular to that plane. So now let's consider the geometry. And based on that ge geometric consideration, we can see that this angle here is going to uh, give us the same angle as this angle. And you can work out that geometry on your own, but it will help us um, to find that normal vector. And when we do that, we can further decompose and find the magnitude of the nx and the magnitude of the ny when we know that angle. So taking a look at that and knowing this, so the slope of this plane, we can then decompose this and say that nx is going to be equal to the magnitude of the normal vector times cosine, whereas ny will be that magnitude times the sine. Since n hat, the normal unit vector, is a unit vector, it's equal to 1, and that just reduces to cosine theta and sine of theta. <clears throat> so what is theta? How can we find that? Let's do a little bit of trigonometry. We can see, once again, that based on knowing this is theta, we can see that the height of this triangle here because of where the intercept is, this must be equal to 2, and this must be equal to 1. So the tangent of theta will be equal to opposite over adjacent, <clears throat> and if we take the inverse tangent of that 1 half, we can see that the angle is going to be 26.57 degrees, and we're going to use degrees since we're engineers, but if you did this in radians, you'll get 0 0.46. So now we have a normal unit vector, for this. So unlike some of the other problems we've done, this normal unit vector is going to contain uh, multiple parts of our orthonormal coordinate system, in this case both some x and some y. So the normal uh, is going to include some x and some y component, and we just determine that based on this angle theta, which is right here. So now we have an expression for n hat. Great, so now that we know what normal is, we should be able to move towards using these expressions where we have normal and tangent relationships for the boundary conditions. So as we continue to go forward, we can't forget that 
any vector could be decomposed as the normal part plus the tangent part. So we're going to work forwards by seeing that the magnitude of the flux density in the normal direction would be equal to n hat, that normal unit vector, and this is what we just found, dotted with our flux b1, which was given. All right, so our goal is to find b2, flux b2, but we're given b1, and we just found this n hat. So we should, we can now work towards getting this b1n, this magnitude, which we can see is going to start moving us towards finding components of b2. All right, so these two things are equivalent. Now, if we take, and, and so we're gonna, we can use that later on, but for now, let's continue working with the flux only. So for B1n, this component, we can find it by taking the normal vector dotted with our field, which is given, All right? So we just found this in the previous video. We were given this in the problem statement, and our goal is to find B2. So since we found that unit vector, we can dot it with b, which we were given, and in numerical form, we know that this is going to be scalar because we take the dot product between these two vectors. Once we do that, we can see that the magnitude in the normal direction is 3.13, and we can see that based on our boundary conditions, that's going to be equal to b2 normal component. So that flux density maintains the same magnitude as it goes through the boundary. Now, we, now that we've determined part of that, we should continue moving forward by trying to find what the tangent is, because we have some tangent relationships, and the tangent relationships will help us determine the B2 tangent component. So we found the B1 normal component, which helps us under, know the B2 normal. So now if we find the B1 tangent, that will help us find the B2 tangent. Now, again, we should not forget that we can decompose any vector into the normal and tangent components. So once we do that decomposition, we've decomposed this vector b1, and we can subtract the normal component from the tangent component. So b1, this is what was given, and we've put that here, whereas b1n, the normal part, that's what we just found here. We found the normal magnitude, and we know the normal unit vector. So we can find this uh, B1 normal vector by just taking n hat B1n. And so that's what I've done here, is I've taken normal the normal unit vector dotted with the magnitude of B1n, which we just found, and then I subtracted it from B1, which we were given. And now this gives us B1 tangent, and this is a vector. All right, great, so we're getting somewhere now. Now we have some tangent components and some normal components. Now we can further relate this to find the B2 tangent. Now the B2 tangent is a little bit trickier than the normal components, and that's because right, the tangent part, you're is when we have to start taking into account our material properties. So setting these two components equal, I can rearrange to solve for the B2 tangent vector. So that must be the mu2 divided by mu1. Now recall in the problem statement, we were given this knowledge that mu2 would be two times mu1. So I've gone ahead and substituted it in. And in the previous slide, we have just found what B1 tangent vector is. That's what we arrived at down here. So this is our B1 tangent that we got to down here. So I've used it in this slide. Now, taking this coefficient, which is based on the material properties, multiplying it by the B1 tangent, I arrive at the expression for B2 tangent. So now we have B2 normal and the B2 tangent, and we can sum those together. Again, we cannot forget that any vector we can write as that sum of the normal plus the tangent, right? So we can sum these things together. 
So this is the first part from the normal, the normal boundary conditions. This is the second part from the tangent boundary conditions. We can sum those together to arrive at an expression for B2. Now, in this case, we had uh, a normal that was on the tilted plane. And so we can see that the normal and tangent had some x and some y. And so those get summed together to get this final expression for the flux B2. So this is the final answer that we were looking for. Now, I promised you previously that what if we had chosen the normal to be in the opposite direction? So this is the problem that we just did. We selected this, right? However, what if we did it backwards and selected the normal in the other direction? Well, we can see that this would actually end up giving us the same result. And I won't go into too much detail here, but um, if you pause the video, you can look at this. Basically, our B1 normal vector is going to be the same whether we use normal 1 or normal 2. And so you could arrive at the same solution by doing this. So in that next step, when you solve for the B1 tangent, you're going to get the same result regardless of which normal unit vector you selected. So lastly, I want to mention strategy for boundary condition problems. First, you should determine normal. You can determine normal for tilted planes or for planes that lie on our standard orthonormal coordinate systems. And hopefully you have some confidence now to see how to use a plane, if you were able to uh, find the, a line across that plane, how you could use that to determine the normal unit vector. Then rely on vector decomposition. So you can decompose any vector into the normal and tangent components. When you do that, don't forget that once you've determined that normal unit vector, you can write the normal unit vector multiplied by a magnitude in the normal direction. So that is, can also be used in combination with finding the magnitude of the scalar. And this would be a1, a, n, which is the same here. So you can use this vector knowledge to arrive at that final solution. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.